all praise to the most high yah hallelujah we give him all glory and honor and thanks let's go before the most high in a word of prayer papa we thank you for your love and kindness great is thy faithfulness thank you for um, just being so good and kind to us merciful forgiveness of our sins we confess our sins have mercy on us we pray of all our sins father known and unknown Pray for your Holy Spirit to guide and lead and direct our footsteps, hallelujah, and lead us in the way you would have us to go and keep us from falling prey to temptation and sin and transgression and iniquity. We pray for righteousness, sanctification, and holiness. Follow your commandments, hallelujah, your laws, statutes, judgments, and decrees to keep us holy and disciplined, hallelujah, and sanctified unto you. Bless this message, Papa, and Bless your children wherever we're scattered to the four corners of the earth. We praise you and we thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Song says, Send the light, send the light. Oh, my great Yahweh, send the light into our midst. Yahweh, send the light, send the light, send the light. Oh, my great Yahweh, send the light into our midst. Yahweh, send the light. Send your light, send your light, oh my great Yahweh, send the light into our midst. Hallelujah, send the light, hallelujah, which is your word. The scripture says, your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. I can see where I'm going, I could have direction for my life, I can have order for my life, if I have your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, hallelujah. It directs my footsteps, hallelujah. So I can make right decisions, mm -hmm. go in the right direction, hallelujah. Live a righteous life, hallelujah. My footsteps are is the, my, the activity, my actions, what I'm doing in my life, which dictates, you know, what my life is about. Is it righteous? Am I doing right or am I doing wrong? So your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Send the light, the song says. And... The message today is do not forget. We're coming from Deuteronomy 8, do not forget. So let's read some uh, some of the scripture, all praise to the Most High. Hope everyone is doing well. Do not forget is the subject heading. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land Yah promised on oath to your ancestors. It's a promise, hallelujah. The Most High is a promise keeper. We fail in our promises and, you know, to each other. Um, Yo, sis, I got you, bro, I got you. Yeah, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And sometimes we don't come through. We have good intentions as human beings. Sometimes we have evil intentions, right? But we're talking about when we have a good heart, when we intend to do something good. And sometimes uh, something can occur to prevent that from happening. And therefore, we are not able to carry it out. But the Most High, He carries out His promises. Hey, He keeps his word, hallelujah, on oath. When he says it, he's going to do it. So he promised to give the land to the ancestors of Abraham. And all oh, praise to the Most High, they received that land. But they didn't stay faithful. But we'll, we're going there. Do not forget. Mm -hmm. When the Most High blesses us, are we going to forget? <sighs> Remember, verse 2, how Yah, your Elimo, led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble you and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. So they were going through tests and they perhaps didn't realize that they were being tested. They were complaining, give us some meat. We had leeks, we had all these kind of different vegetables and meat in Egypt in our captivity. And you know, they complained that things were better for them and they wanted to go back. Can you imagine? <laughs> After all the most I did for them, they forgot. Right? In just that small period of time, they forgot. So they wandered through the wilderness 40 years and he tested them. You know, sometimes our tests come to, um, for the Most High to determine if we are his children or not, to help us draw closer to him, right? To prove our faithfulness to him, right? We go through different tests, right? Like uh, people when they enter the military um, and they go through boot camp, they're being tested to determine if they're going to be able to go to the next level, if they're going to be able to enter into the military. So yes, we, we go through different tests to determine our worthiness, our faithfulness, if we are capable. Hello, somebody? So yes, he tested them. 
to see what was in their heart, you know. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, so you know what's in a person when they go through various tests. You know, it'll, it'll come out, right? Even when we fast sometimes, that's like a test, right? We're disciplining our body, we're depriving our body of the, um, the uh, physical food that it needs and the water that it needs if we're abstaining from water and food and the body is going through, right? The body starts to, you know, um, toxins begin to come out, right? And sometimes our behavior is not so great where maybe our patience and we might, you know, there might be some anger to be evoked from us when we are fasting. So yeah, different tests will evoke different types of things that need to come out of us. It needs to come out of us. So you prove them mm -hmm. when you put them through the wilderness. And it was all their own unfaithfulness and their complaining and ungratefulness and rebellion that made their journey 40 years long. Mm -hmm. So, verse 3, he humbled them. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Most High. As uh, Isaiah, the one we call Jesus Christ, was tempted in the wilderness, and Satan said, turn these stones into bread, which of course he could have done. But he said, no, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Most High. Moses, up on that mountain for 40 good days, he was feeding on the presence of the Most High Yah. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. Receiving the word from the Most High. Hallelujah. And he was sustained. All praises to the Most High Yah. So, do not forget. Mm -hmm. Your clothes did not wear out, verse 4. And your feet did not swell during these 40 years. As we know today, we have a lot of physical maladies that go on with us. We just walk a short distance, maybe sitting too much. Maybe we have uh, too much sodium in our bodies. And um, our bodies are retaining water. We may have edema. edema and uh, lots of inflammation going on, mucus in the body, all these things are causing sicknesses and diseases. So for 40 years they were wandering and their feet didn't swell, that is amazing. But for the little distances that we walk and sit, our feet are swelling, right? But for 40 years their feet didn't swell. Mm, my, 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 what an amazing Most High He is. He kept them and their clothes didn't wear out, 40 years. How many of us have clothes for only a few months a few years and the clothes are wearing out right the materials thinning and we're getting um lit on them and right and they're just fading the colors are fading but for 40 years the clothes didn't wear out hallelujah all praise to the most high yah and their feet didn't swell they were in good health we don't hear of, of any uh any of the scripts that i've read so far whether it's in the apocrypha text or in uh the bible text that we have king james version or one of the versions we might be using uh, the 66 books that we read, we don't read of any sicknesses that they had. Now, he was allowing plagues to come on them when they were rebellious and snakes bit them, right? But there were no diseases coming upon them when they were obedient, right? So, yeah, don't forget. Don't forget the Most High. Are these things happening to us because we have forgotten the Most High? Hmm. The clothes didn't wear off. The feet didn't swell. They didn't have any sicknesses or diseases, right? They were able to eat the food that the Most High gave them. Now look, they wanted meat, right? They said, complained that they had meat in Egypt. And meat, do we always necessarily need to eat meat? No, not necessarily. And are we consuming too much meat? Does the body have too much protein, unprocessed protein? As I talked about in previous posts, unprocessed protein, um, some researchers are say it's associated with different types of cancers. And we're eating meat all times of night. Fried chicken, right? We love some fried chicken. <laughs> we diasporans. We love chicken, period, right? Baked chicken, roasted chicken, fried chicken, whatever the kind, barbecue chicken, just all kinds of chicken, chicken, chicken. Mm -hmm. Seems to be our favorite meat. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so they wanted meat, but he gave them a particular type of food, quail, which is probably more healthy and manna, which was probably more healthy than the kind of breads we're consuming today, right? Which has all this different kind of sugar in it, right? Mm -mm -mm. And so, yeah, we're eating so many things that are unhealthy and we're desiring it because we have forgotten the most high. 
We've forgotten this covenant. We've forgotten that we are the people of the book. And so we forgot that we are to abide by this covenant, which is a certain type of dietary um, laws that we're supposed to follow. We've been eating all kinds of things that are not good for us. And as a result, our feet are swelling and we are having all kinds of uh, physical maladies happening to us. And yeah, so know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Most High, Yah, disciplines you. So we've forgotten uh, the Most High. And we have not we have forgotten to be uh, disciplinaries in our home. Many of us are losing the authority in our homes with our children. Children are taking over homes completely, right? So we've refused and forgotten the authority of the Most High over us. And therefore, we have lost our authority also in our homes. Because if you don't have the Most High rule in your houses, how are you going to have authority in your own home? Where's your authority coming from? It comes from the Most High. And so we're losing that, right? We're losing the authority in our homes. And we don't want to be disciplined by the Most High by staying under this law. And therefore, we are not able to discipline ourselves. And therefore, we can't discipline our children. So everything is just chaotic and completely out of order. We have forgotten. Do not forget the Most High. He disciplines us, and we need to be disciplined, right? Because we are his people. It's what sets us apart from the other nations, that we are a disciplined people. We are a holy people unto him. Verse 6, observe the commands of the Most High, Yah, walking in obedience to him and revering him. We are to honor him and him alone. Revere him, to honor him, to extol him, hallelujah, to put him above all others, right? Make him first in our lives, ruling our lives. Revering him, honoring him, right? For Yah, your limo, is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, I love this, streams, deep springs, gushing out into valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. Sounds like Africa to me. Mm -hmm. where all the good the good elements are. Yes. And yes, this is what the Most High has given his people. This is where he brought our ancestors into the land, the promised land that he promised ancestors of Abraham. He promised to give them a land, and through Joshua, they crossed over into that land. Mm -hmm. And it had all these good elements, as the land of Africa today has all of these good elements, right? Copper, gold, diamond, ivory, manganese, um, what else? Uh, coffee, oil, right? All the good things, the milk, the honey, mm -hmm. olive oil, wheat, barley, all the wonderful things that the land produces that other nations seem to be benefiting from more than the natives of the land, right? And we know it's because we have forgotten that the Most High have allowed, has allowed our captors to take us captivity. Those of us who came over to the Americas, mm -hmm. our ancestors were taken captivity. And as a result, we have forgotten. We forgot our homeland. We forgot our customs. We forgot this culture, this divine way that the Most High has caused us to live and to be set apart. We completely forgot and started to align with these other nations, right? We forgot this beautiful land and all the wonderful things that it produces, valleys and streams and springs. Yes, no water is supposed to be lacking. It's not supposed to be any periods of having no water. Africa is the land where the water is falling. Hallelujah. Rainy seasons. All praises to the Most High for the rainy season where the water is falling. California is a drought. I'm just picking California because I lived there before, and I know that it's a desert. It's very dry, and they complain. I know one particular um, a friend that I know complains about her, her garden not receiving the kind of water that she needs because the water is lacking. But we in the motherland, those of us in the motherland, we get plenty of water. And so we praise him for that. Let's not complain about the water or thank him for the water. He sends the rain, hallelujah, we praise him. It waters the earth, hallelujah, so that produce can come, hallelujah, so that we can have a harvest. All praises so we can drink, hallelujah, and fill up this body with the water that it needs. So this is what the Most High does for those of us who are observing the commandments and being willing to obey and walking in obedience. This is the promise that he gives. So verse 10, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Most High, Yah. 
for the good land he has given you. We ought to praise him, hallelujah, for the good things he's done. We must recognize that it is him who's given us the blessing, right? The good land he has given us, the land is good. Hallelujah, the land is good. Asasapa, which is a, a land in Ghana where you can go and um, buy in the market delicious foods like dandelion that have been uh, grown from the land. Mm, I think dandelion, uh, let's see, I believe parsley. Um, I think there was, I can't remember if it was um, celery. I might be getting mixed up with Cameroon, but anyway, I remember the dandelion, I remember the parsley, the um, beets and uh, carrots, cabbage, uh, so many delicious types of foods. You know, the, I'm thinking of the vegetables, but they're also delicious fruits too. Uh, eating from the land, Asasapa, the land is good. The land of Africa is good, hallelujah. It is the land of milk and honey promised to our ancestors, amen. So this is the land. He said, praise him. When the Most High brings you back to the land, you ought to praise him. There ought to be a praise in you, hallelujah. Give him the glory and the honor. And remember that he is the one who has done it. Don't forget. Verse 11, be careful that you do not forget Yah, your Alimo, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. This was the command given to our ancestors at the time. Moses is speaking to them. Don't forget. After the good things the Most High has done for you, don't forget. Remember to honor him and to honor what he has commanded you to do, which is the law, the laws of the Most High. Yeah, don't forget them. Don't forget. It's what governs our lives. Hallelujah. The laws are what governs our lives to give us discipline, to keep us the holy, sanctified, set apart people that we are. Hallelujah. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. Now, why is he warning the people to forget? Because he knew that they were going to forget. Because once we get blessed, isn't that the tendency that we tend to forget? Verse 12. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, oh, they have wealth, the gold, the silver, diamonds, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget Yahya Limo, who brought you out of Egypt, brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And yes, they have, they forgot. They were warned not to forget because Moses knew that they would forget. Because the Most High knew that his people would forget. That's why he gave that word to Moses to tell the people, don't forget. Excuse me. And it's very easy for us to get. Once we, when we're going through battles and storms and things are difficult, we're praying, we're fasting, we're seeking the Most High. But then as soon as the blessing comes, we do tend to forget. Mm -hmm. We forget that it's him who's, who's given us the blessing. Right? Once we receive the houses, the land, the wealth, we do tend to forget, right? We get satisfied, right? We get complacent. And the things that cause us to be close to the Most High, which is the struggle, which is the battle, which is the storms, right? Which is a difficulty. Once we get the blessings and we start to feel relaxed, then we don't have that same drive. We don't have that same urgency to pray, to fast, to seek Him, to praise Him, right? We forget. Once we get what we want. Our children are often that way, right? Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Oh, you're so wonderful. You're so loving. You're so kind. You'd be like, mm-hmm, what do you want, right? We know they want something. And then once they get it, it's like they back off. And, you know, the phone calls. We don't hear from them. Mm. <laughs> right? So, yeah, we human beings. That's how we are. May the Most High help us to not forget him. Hmm. Verse 15. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. Now, when they were obeying the Most High, those snakes didn't bite them. But when they became wicked and rebellious, then he allowed those snakes to bite them. But the scorpions didn't touch them either when they were obedient. So the, the animals, the insects, all these creatures of the land are supposed to be under our power, right? Under our dominion. We're supposed to have dominion over them. But when we rebel, then those uh, animals, insects, they will attack us in our rebellion. Come on, someone. The Most High will allow nature to become our enemy, right? The waters will start to flood. Tsunamis and all these things happening. The earth will open up, right? Earthquakes, uh-huh. And tornadoes. Wind, strong winds, woo, picking up houses and cars and people. Woo, he will allow the, the nature, nature to attack us. 
right? The things that are supposed to be under our dominion, when we don't obey, when we forget him. Whew, my, 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 my. Do not forget. Whew, my. He brought you water out of a rock, out of a hard rock, not just a rock, but a hard rock. Roses spoke to the rock. Um, no, he struck the rock. He didn't speak to the rock when he was supposed to, but he struck it. So he hit the rock when he was commanded to, and water came out. Then when he was supposed to speak to the rock, he didn't. And he didn't honor the Most High's holiness. And it was a great offense against the Most High because it was a directive, a direct command, speak to the rock. And he turned around out of his anger because the people were rebelling and he struck it. Whew. It was a very costly thing. And as a result, he, him and Aaron were not allowed to go into the land after all that we can say hard work. It seemed like Moses was doing so good up until that point. But when he did or disobeyed the Most High, it, it cost him <clears throat> not going over into the land. He was able to see it visually, but he couldn't cross over himself. It was Joshua who took on that, um, that role. And so, yeah, don't forget. So he brought water out of a hard rock. Hallelujah. He, verse 16, he gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known to humble you and to test you that in the end it might go well with you. So the humbling, the testing is to humble us so that it can go well with us. It's to bring out the good in us so that we can be drawn closer to the Most High. So everything that's in us that is not good, that is antagonistic, that is displeasing to the Most High, that is uh, disobedient in us, that is against anything that is good for us, it will come out of us. It will be driven out of us through these tests. It will humble us. We need to be humble among somebody so that we will be his faithful people. Hallelujah. The tests ought to come to humble you, not to break you, but to humble you so that you will uh, be his faithful children. Hallelujah, his faithful people. Amen. -o. So verse 17, to humble you and to test you so that in the end it will go well with you. Verse 17, you may say to yourself, my power and my and strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. So yes, those of us who are in the Americas, you know, we may think that, um, you know, we'll forget it was our ancestors who, who labored through their blood and their sweat and, you know, their own lives. They labored in these Americas to build America, right? As we say, we built America, our ancestors' blood, right? They built America, right? And so... Now we are reaping the benefits of that labor, and we may have forgotten that it was our ancestors who built, who, and they did it through the cost of their lives, right? Through slavery, un, uh, what would say, forced labor, forced labor, right? It wasn't, oh, well, I agree to work, and I'm going to get paid this amount. No, it was forced labor, free labor, under serious duress and hardship, right? And yeah, we might be forgetting as we're living in nice houses in the Americas, fine houses, four bedrooms, five bedrooms, four and five toilets, right? And uh, four or five car garages. I don't know if it's that many, but anyway. Three or four car, gar car garages, right? And uh, nice lawns and very nice landscaped uh, yards, right? And uh, beautiful granite countertops, right? And we forgot, we have forgot that it was our ancestors who, whose lives uh, bought all of this wealth that many of us are now experiencing and the good jobs that many of us have, supervisors and managers and we're in upper management, right? And we're in, in governments, right? Having um, high positions and many of us are entrepreneurs. We have our own businesses. We, maybe we, I think we have forgotten because we have, have we told our children, have we carried on this oral tradition, which is a part of our culture, to let our children know it's the sweat and blood of our ancestors that now have caused you to be able to relax and to enjoy the good, the good that you have, right? Many of our children don't even realize that, th th what slavery was really all about, right? And we know that our, our educational system doesn't teach it. They want us to believe that slavery was just a way of life and we should just get over it. But it's okay for other cultures to talk about their, uh, their traumatic uh, history. But for us, we're just supposed to accept that slavery was just a way of life. Uh -uh, we don't accept. We don't go greedy. Eh? It was a horror on our people. And yes, so now many of us are enjoying the good land. And so we might just be saying, oh, yeah, I did it myself. Verse 17, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Mm. 
I got the good, I got the college degrees, BA, the uh, MA, the PhD. I did it myself. It was my own labor, right? But you, you may have forgotten that it was somebody who suffered, who died, so that things could be better for you. Mm -hmm. you now you're thinking that you did it yourself. Now let's continue, verse 18. But verse 18 puts it even in more perspective, huh? But remember, Yah, your Alimo, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. So it is the Most High who's even blessing you today on the sweat and blood of your ancestors, that you can have a college degree, that you can have the good jobs that you have, that you can be your own uh, business owner. It is his ability, it is his uh, goodness that he's given to you, that you can have that wealth. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. So, yeah, you, you can do it on your own. It's his favor on your life. It is the favor of the Most High God that has caused you to be blessed. And so that, as verse um, 10 says, when you have eaten and are satisfied, when you get to that level, when you are feeling comfortable and you're like, wow, I've arrived, I'm doing well, I'm enjoying my life. When you are satisfied, praise the Most High, your Alimo. Give him the glory and honor, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Give him the honor that he is due. Revere him. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High, Yah. Yes. And so confirms his covenant with you, which he swore to your ancestors. This is a covenant, an eternal covenant that we cannot forget. Do not forget what the Most High has done for you and what he's continuing to do for you. We forgot because our ancestors were taken from the land of milk and honey by force. They were taken captive in chains and taken over to the land of the Americas and other Europe and other places where we are scattered. And yes, and as a result, we started to align with these other nations and following their gods and doing all manner of rebelliousness as we are doing now. And we forgot the Most High, and we are satisfied, we're living well. Many of us are doing well, and we forgot the Most High, and we think that we did it all, all on our own. But the scripture is compelling us, don't forget. Many of us now are trying to remember, we're trying to remember our heritage. We're waking up to, to this great covenant that the Most High gave our ancestors, that he promised on oath to, to Abraham to give us the land. And we're starting to wake up, and we're starting to remember that, oh, we are the people, and we are to live holy, and we are to keep his laws, statutes, and judgments, right? And to do what the Most High commanded, and to obey him as the one that we call Jesus, or some say Messiah, as he came on the earth to remind us again that we are to keep the law, because that's what he did. He kept the law, uh-huh. And he was obedient to the Father as he reminded us to be obedient to the Father, and that our love should be directed towards him, a reverence should be to the Father. This is what he he prayed. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallelujah. Directed us. Brought back to our attention that we should remember this law. As he kept the Sabbath. As he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath. And he taught on the Sabbath. And he healed on the Sabbath. Hallelujah. And he uh, came on the earth to remind us to come back to the Father. Hallelujah. To keep this holy covenant that we have been given. Do not forget. May we remember, hallelujah, as he's waking us up today. May we teach our children to remember this great divine holy covenant. May we come back, hallelujah, to this holy covenant. Come back to our righteous mind, to honoring our Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah, with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. That we honor him, hallelujah, that we will receive the blessings of the land, hallelujah, the land of milk and honey. All praises to the Most High as he helps us to remember and to not forget him. Ha! Ah, may the sheep of the Most High, Yah, wherever we are scattered to the four corners of the earth, may we not forget. May we remember him and may we continue uh, to be blessed. Until next time, all praise to the Most High, Yah.